Are you still enjoying the editing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you get less for murder. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to What's All That About, a podcast where two cheeky chaps chat candidly about stuff. My name is Kelso, one of the aforementioned cheeky chaps, and with me, as always, is my dear longtime mate, Pooch Perfumer, and co-host <laughs> Kerwin. G'day, Kerwin. Hello, dear listener, and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to you, Kelso. Thank you very much indeed, as dear listener knows by now. You uh, make me feel very welcome. So welcome. I'd like to ask you this. How many Sydneys are living in Melbourne? (laughs) Uh, How many people name Sydney? That's right. Are living in Melbourne, do you think? Right. How many Melbournes are living in Sydney? Let's throw it right right back at you. (laughs) Right. Um, Okay. So probably less. A lot less. (laughs) Way less. Yeah. Melbourne's not a very common name. How many Sydneys? Would you... uh, do you think someone is called Melbourne? I think they probably are. Well, I think it was named after Lord Melbourne. That, uh, right. So there's at least one. Um, <laughs> I think I think he's long dead, though. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking more first names, though. So uh, where, where do you stand on uh, people being named after places? I don't mind it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, Have you encountered, encountered anyone named after a place? Hmm. Personally, in real life, no, I don't know. But you know, the, I mean, the first one that springs to mind is Paris Hilton. Not only named after a, a city, but named after a, a hotel in a city. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think there's a pretty easy. Well, there's probably some kind of record uh, record that of of how many Sydneys actually live in Melbourne. I think we could probably find that out if we were probably if a we Twitter were account. Team. Yeah, yeah. Twitter or, accounts you know, at the, all. The National Archives or the Yellow Pages. <laughs> That's right. Well, Perhaps we could pages. form one of those investigative uh, podcasts to look into it. <laughs> Should we do a door knock? We'll knock on every single door in Sydney, uh, in <laughs> Melbourne, and ask, is, is there any Sydneys that live here? Let's see how far we get. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, two of my favourite podcasters, as you know, Kerwin, but perhaps dear listener doesn't, uh, two Australian podcasters by the name of Lexi Toliopoulos and Cameron James. And they have done a couple of uh, funny investigative uh, podcasts. One was called Finding Drago, and I forget the name of the other one. (laughs) But uh, Alexi thought it was a good idea when he went into an interview to talk to the head of the Australian Archive Library, you know what I mean, to wear a a wire, (laughs) because she had an agreement. (laughs) Uh, Only to find that, because they did it for the ABC, only to find that the ABC refused, uh, couldn't put that on air. So uh, that was bad news. (laughs) So we have to keep that in mind. You know what, Kelsey? We haven't name dropped those two on a podcast in a long, long time. It's good wow. to uh, good to hear them, have them back on the yep. show. Yeah, yeah. That's the so difference we... between you and me. My favourite podcasters are Lexi Toliopoulos and uh, Cameron James, and your favourite podcasters are Gilfred Godfrey and David Spade, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Actually, who is my favourite podcaster? Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, it, pro- it probably is Gilbert Gottfried. Mm. Um, now, but, have uh, you had? Have you met anyone called Heaven? Perhaps because that, that technically that's someone named after a place. Heaven? No, I've never met a Heaven. Although I believe there's a lot of girls named Nevaeh, which is Heaven spelt backward. That's a popular name with. Uh, well, hang on, people well. in America and strippers. <laughs> hang on, I'm going to like I'm going to smash the keyboard here and. Spell that out. N E V A E H. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would have picked up on and that. And then hold up a mirror. Yeah, no, that's a that's the thing. Yeah. I, I someone pointed it out to me because I'd heard that name a few times. I thought, what a weird name. And I think it was my sister actually that said, "Oh, that's just heaven backwards." Uh, oh God, again. Wow. Um, okay. So yeah. what's what's on a love spelt backwards? E-V- evil. <laughs> it's evil. Oh, we, we oh got my a, God. This, my is, God. this is the investigative um, podcast deal. This is that. it. Drop, drop everything else about this podcast, Kelso. We're on to something. <laughs> Whatever Whoa. you're planning on talking about today, forget it. 
I just dropped Clear the, the, decks. The, the mic. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. There was an actual mic drop. I am so glad yeah. that happened. Okay. Now, I believe... Um, yeah, I, I should I should point out I did that on purpose to, uh, to engender some... Uh, but it was a mic was drop, it? and it was done purely for dramatic effect. Do you have a spare mic that's not plugged in or anything? You just have it just for dropping? <laughs> No, I had dropped my actual microphone. <laughs> okay. I look around for something heavy to drop, and I, my choices were a glasses case and a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I thought none would carry the weight that um, was warranted in this situation. I don't know. It could be a new saying. OMG, Rubik's Cube drop. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, could, could work. Um, I'll, I'll, I believe I'll run it by my uh, my my uh, seventeen year old niece. She was run says. <laughs> but run it by Roselle as well. I think she's in charge nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> she's taken my parking spot. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I believe a girl. I can't remember who it was, but a girl we went to high school with named her child uh, Camden, which is a suburb of London. Really? And, is yeah, that a real story? I believe okay. so. I, I think so. Uh, but I can't remember who it was, so maybe I dreamt it. And David and Beckham, I believe, has a son. If you want to go full, well, full circle, Kelso, I believe that Camden is also, get this, a suburb in Sydney. Whoa! Rubik's Cube drop. Boom. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll drop the Rubik's Cube and you'll see that it doesn't have the same Okay, let me weight. hear it. Let's see. Oh, it was not too bad, actually. Yeah, not, that was not too bad. Probably, yeah, not, not, probably not as dramatic as a mic drop. Uh, Maybe edit in there a little tinkle. Tinkle? <laughs> well, let me, uh, let me ask you this. Was the Rubik's Cube solved? Uh, no, I did. I, I don't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and I bought one about nine months ago thinking I will um, solve the Rubik's Cube. You know, sure, sure, 30 years late. Uh, mm. But uh, so far I've failed to have solved the Rubik's Cube. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared to buy one because I, I feel it's going to make me feel really stupid because, you know, on YouTube you see, like, these, you know, 13-year-old kids that, like, can solve it, like, one in each hand and well, do it at the same time. That's two, two, different, like, two different skills, though. Well, the, either way. Um, one skill um, is working out on your own how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and then two is doing it really quickly, in my opinion. Yeah, and one in each hand at the same time. Yeah. That's right. That's crazy. It makes me feel really, really stupid when I see stuff like that. Uh, maybe. Uh, I prefer David... the Rubik's rings. Remember them? The Rubik's rings? That <laughs> they was were much easier. easier. Way easier. There was only one way to do it, and, uh, you know, it was like solved in seven moves. Easy yeah. done. Yeah, I could do the Rubik's rings, I'm pl yeah. pleased to announce. Too. Although, do you remember how it was like... Um, all sort of tethered together with basically fishing line. Remember yes, that? yes. And you're a little bit rough with it. The whole thing would just fall apart in your hands. Yeah. Now, I, can you imagine the board meeting when the uh, the board of the Rubik's Cube get, to got, get together and they got that uh, <laughs> Eastern European guy who invented it, Mr. Dr. Rubik's. <laughs> and he said, damn it, we need something easier. <laughs> uh, I kind of thought that, like, the 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 uh, I saw saw the board meeting of the the Rubik's uh, Corporation, and the the long awaited uh, new thing from Doctor Rubik's, and it ended up just being this thing. There was a lot of disappointed looks around the table, like uh, feeling as though his second effort wasn't as good as his first. <laughs> now I I think they pitched to him. They said, "Listen, we're sales are going down. They're too hard. People are giving up. We need something simpler." And Dr. Rubik said, I have nothing, I have nothing. And they said, come on, you must have something. And he said, look, I'll, I'll contact my stupid uh, nephew, uh, Luigi, see what he has. And he had the Rubik's rings. Oh, so you're saying that the, the Rubik's rings was actually invented by Luigi Rubik. <laughs> yeah, Luigi, oh. not, not the best uh, Eastern European not name. I'm going to go for, um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, let's see, Wolfgang? No. Um, no that, that's not far enough east. Not far enough east. Uh, uh, Luca? S no, Luca. I was going to go Sven. No, it's too far uh, north. Too far north. Oh, man. We don't, don't know, know very, very good. No, let's, I don't. Let's, let's I see. Don't. Uh, popular. Ma uh, well, we said nephew, so male names in Hungary. I'm going to go for that. Hungary. Okay. Hungary? Most popular. What do you reckon it is? Um, uh, Zenon. Zenon. Okay, let's, I like that. Let's Zenin go for Zenon. Zen and Rubik. Yeah. He sounds like the kind of guy that would invent a puzzle. <laughs> and a, a, 
particularly easy one. Not a very good one. Like, although you've got to give it to him with the rings that at least you couldn't peel the stickers off. <laughs> you could remove those uh, fishing wires and reattach them, but actually that was harder than solving the puzzle. It was. If you could do that, well, yeah, that's a genius. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you could do that, you could probably solve the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> now, just before we finish here, I've got a couple more questions for you. Yep. You ready? Yep. How many Charlottes are living in Austin? How many Lincolns <laughs> are living in Dallas? How many Madisons are living in Phoenix? How many Brooklyns are living in Paris? How many Chelsea's are living in India? And finally, how many Devons are living in Kent? Uh, um, three. Uh, I don't know. Um, yep. No, you got that right. They're all yeah, three. 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 Okay. Cool. <laughs> now, oh, if you good. if you were to be named after uh, a place, what what would it be, Kerwin? Um. I, I kind of like Austin. You said it before. I, li I like that. I don't mind that. Austin. Apparently, Austin in Texas is a really cool city. Never been there, but I, I hear good reports. Oh, okay. So, I yep. go for Austin. I guess it's kind of cool. What about you? Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit silly. <laughs> okay. Well, you've got to tell me now. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's a bit silly. Oh, come on. All right. Uh, you know, in that Simpson episode where uh, Homer became a mascot and he moved to another city and became the mascot of the team, I wouldn't be mind being called Capital City. <laughs> I told you it was silly. Uh, well, um, how would you spell it? <laughs> with, a, with a capital Z? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just joking, of course, dear listener. If, if I was going to be really silly and was named after a place, it would it'd probably be... Bangkok? <laughs> Mic drops. Record scratch. Next, next part. Oh. My little brother has Asperger's, so when I give him a Rubik's Cube, it takes 12 seconds for him to say thank you. Cohen, Rizal uh, has taken my parking spot and also uh, I noticed on my car under the windscreen wiper this morning was this piece of paper with an article to talk about. So I guess Rizal and I aren't talking at the moment. I'm not sure what that's about. Well, so that's cold. She's taking your parking spot and uh, where are you parking? Like um, out on the street. And then she puts your news article under your windscreen I, I'm across the road in the red rooster <laughs> ouch now strangely yeah. enough the staff haven't twigged yet because I'm often parked in the red rooster but uh, that's another story <laughs> uh, right now I, a I valued, at, valued customer <laughs> indeed now I picked at this one I'm not going to read the headline because I'm going to ask you at the end then dear listener to uh, have a crack at the headline okay because it involves puns, and uh, if there's one thing we like on What's All That About, it's puns. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm going to say that Unsolicited to puns, that's what we like. <laughs> I'm going to say that to Rizal next time I see her, actually. What, since she's not talking to me, I'm going to say, What's All That About? Next time you see her, not if she sees you first. Oh, exactly. I think she's <laughs> avoiding me. All right. So I'm skipping the, uh, the, the headline here. So uh, we might actually we're going to lose a little bit of context when I read the first sentence here. The six hundred oh, str straight into the guts is that what that was happening? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. The six hundred kilogram farm animal was hoisted out after spending around four hours in his watery predicament in Devon. <laughs> right. Right. So six hundred what pound did you say pound? Six hundred kilograms. So I think that kilogram. Um, Sheesh, that's huge. Yeah, so how many pounds is that? You've got to times it by two. That's about 2.2, .2, so that's about uh, 1,400 pounds. Farm that's half animal. a pickup truck. <laughs> that's right. Uh, the last truck I picked up weighed at least that much, or well, half of that. <laughs> uh, so the 600-kilogram farm animal was hoisted out after spending around four hours in his watery predicament. So because I've skipped the headline, you have to fill in a few things there. Can you do it? Okay, um, so just based on that, I've got to come up with a headline. No, no, no. Uh, okay. No, I, 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 we have to fill the dealers room with some uh, 
some missing context. Okay. So what what type of farm animal was it? Well, it sounds like it's going to be a cow. It's a cow. It's a cow. And yep. it spent four hours in his watery predicament. Watery predicament. Um, so, hmm. Maybe well, cast, your, like a, a... cast your mind back. The last time you were in a watery predicament, what was it? <laughs> oh, like when I pissed myself. <laughs> oh, no. Um, oh, when I fell in a puddle. All right, close. It, it was in a pool. It was in a pool. Um, right, so cow was in a pool. You, you, what, cow was in a pool. So you want a headline from that? Or we, or, well, or I don't know. Do you feel clues? brave now? Or, um, no, do, do, I need do you want to hear the rest? Before I okay. take a stab. I mean, I've got a couple of ideas, but no, I don't, yeah, no, I'll need some more. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, though, to, uh, you might want to take notes. Um, there are three puns in the headline, which is quite long. As well, as your point. Oh my god! Okay, it's one okay, of those headlines. Stab at one of the puns. Yep. Is one of them holy cow? Oh no, but that's close. No. Okay. Damn. Okay. All right. Forget. Does it involve the word cow? Do- it does involve the word cow. Yeah, and it's one of those um, headlines that's got a little bit and then colon and then the rest of the headline. So that's how they've managed to get three puns in there. Is it kick a moo cow? <laughs> Well, no, but actually the place in Devon, uh, funnily enough, because I know a girl who went to school called this, is called uh, Kikamuka. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> no, I, I thought Kikamuka was uh, like one of the summer camps in um, the 80s movies or something. Oh, that Camp does... Kikamuka. All right, I think I'm going to have to Google Sounds that. Familiar? that ring. Kick, um... or maybe, Or maybe it, it could be a place in like Peru, like an actual place. Hmm. Like somewhere uh, like near the Andes, uh, kick a moo cow. Oh, okay, hang on. Why kick a moo cow is a place in New Zealand? No, hang on. Really? Yes, there's a book you can buy called Why Kick a Moo Cow Curious New Zealand Place Names. It's in paperback. And at least in London, wow. I can buy it for 83p. I didn't realise uh, why kick a moo cow was so close to home. Um, now I know the answer to the question why kick a moo cow? Well, why not? Okay, now I should point out, yeah. dear listener. That's actually not how you spell it. It's spelt, as you would imagine, a Maori. The Maori people might spell it, but it does kind of read very similar to Waikikamu Cow. Waikikamu Cow. Okay, there we go. Well, I was way off then. It was nowhere <laughs> near the uh, Peru. Well, so there you go. We okay, got to so the, end. We got to the uh, got bottom of that pool, much like this uh, cow did. <laughs> Right. A young bullock. Oh, th- there you go. I was reading like the. You know how there's a sub headline. So actually, now I've got into the article, which it did explain. It didn't have to guess, but that was fun. A young bullock, who fell into a swimming pool after making his escape from a field, has been winched to safety by firefighters. <laughs> okay. So hang on. Can I have another stab at a part of the headline? Sure. Because you said bullock. It's not a cow. So is it like something to do with no bull? <laughs> That's uh, also very close. Although I suppose any cow, any cow or bovine pun would uh, work. Would be very good. Okay. Well, I'm chipping away at it. So yeah. yeah. Well, hang on. So what's a bullock? Is that a male cow? I thought it was. Yeah. I thought, oh, hang on. I've googled it. I've, I've come up with Sandra Bullock. Oh. We're not interested in <laughs> no. bullock meaning. Uh, da, da, da. Yes. A young no, bullock who no, fell into cow. a swimming pool. Now you should ignore that when it comes to your one of your puns. By the way, don't. don't oh, worry. okay, all right. Yeah. <coughs> so, so we're going gender neutral bovine. Yeah, yeah. W- was that the headline? No, just, that's just no. Um. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so, blah blah blah. Escape from a field. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so the group manager at uh, Devon Fire and Rescue said. He did spend quite some time with his nose just below the surface, blowing bubbles, which he seemed to enjoy. Wow. <laughs> well, well, I actually, I spent a lot of time as a youngster in, in pools blowing bubbles. Um. <laughs> I think Michael Jackson spent a lot of time blowing bubbles. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> Wasn't <It> clear. <laughs> Oh, oh, that no. is a deep cut joke. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. You have to know that he once owned a chimpanzee yeah. called Bubbles. Funny enough, and, when uh, uh, Michael was interviewed about blowing bubbles, he also s- mentioned that there were a lot of moving parts. 
dear. Uh, dear listener, get in cut- touch with us at Podcast K at K and Podcast K at K at gmail.com if you uh, want to know <laughs> the background for that. I suppose you could just uh, Google Michael Jackson bubbles, which we won't do. <laughs> Oh. And to be clear, there were no allegations. I believe that uh, any no, sort well, of yeah, uh, inappropriate. Yeah, well, uh, no, he was he was all above board from what I hear. Yeah, yeah I don't want uh, uh, Tito to get in touch and uh, bore me out. <laughs> Tito, <laughs> <laughs> who cries for Tito? That's what I want to know. That's the only uh, Jackson Five's <laughs> name I could think of. Um, who else was there? Um. Uh, let's see. I think there was Sleepy Doc, um, Happy. No, no. I think it's uh, no. You're Tino, wrong there. Ja- None Tino. of the Jackson Five were happy. <laughs> no, I think um, Jermaine. There was a Jermaine. Jermaine. Yeah. Um, there was a. Uh, I think there was a. There was Tito. I think there was a, a, a Jackie. I think. Um, wow. Tito. Sure, there was more. Marlon. There was a Marlon. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, so that's that's four. Four. Um, Tito, Jermaine, uh, Michael, Marlon, Jackie. I think that's five. Okay. Got five. Yeah. Original and then, Jackson. of course, Latoya and, and, and Janet. Well, it was a no, no girls club, was it? So. If, if you're listening, if you're one of the uh, Jacksons we've left out, um, <laughs> make sure to tweet us at uh, podcast KAK on Twitter. Yeah, you're right. Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael. Yes. Yeah. Nailed it. Back the and there day. wasn't any more? There wasn't like any like younger ones? I think there was a Rebby, uh, I think. I, yeah, I, that, that's, I googled the original lineup. So if you want uh, follow-up um, additions. Because they probably had to replace Michael at one stage, didn't they? Um, no, I think they didn't really. If he wasn't there, there was no Jacksons. He was the only good one, let's face it. <laughs> wow. Well. I know a lot of people who disagree, who uh, love Latoya. <laughs> I feel like um, the last five minutes of this conversation is really going to put us on the outer with the Jackson clan. Yes. Um, yeah. But, Not uh, look, a place you want to be. We live fast, die young. Yeah. At, uh, what's all that about? Um, okay. So this cow situation, I feel like we're, uh, I'm not getting any closer to this headline. Okay. Well, let's see. There's a... Uh, right. When they started pumping out the water, he seemed to swim along the pool and investigate the pump. All were relieved to see him safe and well. Okay, uh, but that's about it. There's, <laughs> I think that's just that, that, that's it. A really good outcome for one very cold young bullock," said <laughs> Mister Crude. Said, and some and some very um, talented sub editor got three bovine-related puns into the headline from that. That's right. Now I'm struggling to get one. Um, let's see. Can I have a clue? Is there anything yeah. that might push me in that direction without giving right, it away? So, yeah. So one one pun is uh, about the fact that it's a uh, type of, that type of animal. Right. Two, the rescue went well. Three, he got out and on his way. Oh, so something about move. Yes. Is, is okay, good. Yes. You got, you got That's the one. You got one. Okay. Um, the, the rescue went well. The rescue went well. It was a... Um, uh, from a pool. From a pool. Oh, what am I not seeing here? Uh, it's probably really obvious. Uh, from a pool. Yeah. You made it... No, it was a splash. Um, <laughs> uh, I like a splash, no, you though. Got, they, they could have used splash. Um, um, okay, anything the, to do with it's it's uh, utterly ridiculous. <laughs> anything like that? That's very good. That's very good. As Not well. bad. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Hang on. I'm going to take notes here. We'll write our own headline. <laughs> yeah, we should sub- resubmit the headline. <laughs> utterly ridiculous. Move. Oh, yeah, that was already part of it. Splash. Um, yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah, the final pun is to do with the fact. Was that it a was it a dairy rescue? No, no, that's the um, daring. No, it doesn't quite work. Does it? That will do, I think. Um, dear listener, will no. Say okay, that. all right. <laughs> so your headline is 
dairy rescue exclamation point <laughs> it's utterly ridiculous this res- <laughs> this did not make a bigger splash as firefighters get cow moving <laughs> That nope, totally works. Uh, All right. Okay. Right now, we're, now can we reveal the uh, the actual headline? I wonder what it's going to be. How far off was I? Drum roll. I don't have any drums yet. And that was for the editor. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll put drum, one. In. Drum roll. Cows about that. Oh. <laughs> Colon. <laughs> Cows about that, colon. Bullock's pool rescue goes swimmingly as firefighters get him moving. Oh, okay, that's good. I like how the first one's basically channeling a little bit of Jimmy Savile there. How's about that, then? <laughs> yeah. uh, back of the vet. No wonder uh, Roselle left this on the windscreen in my car in the Red Rooster car park. She probably couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> or more likely, Roselle pushed the, that cow into the pool. <laughs> oh dear you know what she's like yeah, yeah. she's a vegan <laughs> <laughs> alright cool that, was, that, that, that really it. was the headline yeah. uh, that was way off uh, read it again what was it <laughs> read it back to cows about that bullocks cows pool about. rescue goes swimmingly as firefighters swimming, get in moving it's how did I not get swimming me? Damn. It's a tough job. <laughs> Dear listener, do you know why cows wear bells around their necks? Because their horns don't work. Come on, Kerwin, now that's how you do a cow joke. Oh well, an utter day, an utter dollar, I guess. That was quite amusing. I'm such a comedian. Kerwin, I actually uh, just ran into Roselle as I popped out to get a coffee. Who She buttonholed me. Uh, oh. Apparently, we're not having a tiff. It's just that she can never find me, apparently. And ah. she uh, pushed into my hand this article. So, Roselle, dear listen, of course, is our intern. If you'd like to become a virtual intern, you can do so by sending through a story... Perhaps a song related to it to podcast kk on Twitter or podcast kk at gmail dot com. Squeeze in on her action, muscle in, and then uh, you'll um, find us reading out your articles. You were going to say something, old boy. I was, Kelsey. What, what's buttonhold? What's that? What I, be- I believe it's when you uh, get someone by, by the lapels, but I don't know what's called buttonholing. Oh, like shirt fronting. That kind of thing. Yeah, let's let's look that up. I'm sorry, uh, Rose, I will be right on to your buttonhole. I have to admit, and maybe that's my dirty mind, it sounded a little bit kind <laughs> of like, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit rude, a little bit like okay, digital no. penetration. Like, I just got <laughs> buttonholed by my, my, my priest, you know, that kind of thing. It does sound rude in that context, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Roselle and I are pretty far from buttonholing each other. Um, <laughs> although, yes, I might send her a muffin basket and see how things go. <laughs> now, muffin bar- <laughs> basket definitely sounds rude. Yeah, that is, but, that is not. A- <laughs> well, on my last date, um, the la- I did say to the lady, "If um, if I let you buttonhole me, would you let me uh, muffin basket you?" <laughs> I'll buttonhole you right in the muffin basket if you're not careful. Oh, crikey. That's fine, but I prefer to be muffin basketed in my buttonhole. <laughs> Kinky. All right. Uh, okay. Fair there right. is a definition right. here for but- buttonholing. It's, attract the, it's informal. Attract the attention of and detain someone in conversation, typically against their will. So she did buttonhole me. Hmm. Detains so, like sort of bail someone up. Is that what yep, you mean? That's right. right. Kind of yep. Right. Okay. So I'll, the example I'll start here. using that. <laughs> example here is reporters buttonhole officials coming out of the press secretary's office. You know what? I think I got buttonhole today. <laughs> All right. In the I'm muffin basket. What you're describing? Yeah. No. <laughs> I wish. No. Um, I'm pretty sure that I didn't realise that that was what that was. Now I know. I can say to people, hey, I feel like you're really butting, button, but, oh my God. buttonholing me right now. I really need you to step back. Yep. Yeah. 
No, it's when you're, yeah, you're slinking around trying to avoid someone and they finally get you and uh, take you to task. Um, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Right, here we go. Okay. Religious artwork removed after local priest and businessman found among holy images. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to read that again. Yeah, I was going to say, did you pass that? <laughs> No, I did not. No, I I got lost somewhere there in the right. in the in the mix. Reli- re- <laughs> religious. Are, are we missing any punctuation? Is, is, <laughs> no. is there a comma no. in there? Okay, right. No, it's all your fault. Religious okay. artwork removed. So yeah, there's remo- the first part. Okay. Religious yeah. artwork removed after local priest and businessman found among images. So you're still confused. I am. I'm, 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 am I meant to be confused? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe this was a deliberately confusing headline that made the, the reader sort of sort of be, be drawn right. in. I think maybe that was deliberate. All right, dear listeners, uh, bear with us while I slow things down for Kerwin of the podcast here. <laughs> 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 They're miles ahead of you, mate. <laughs> oh no! Right, we've got a religious artwork. So, what's normally in a religious artwork? I don't know, painting of Jesus? Correct. Yeah. Right. Do like you the ex- Last Supper or something. Yeah. You know, and maybe, I don't know, um, St. Patrick or something like that there. Yeah? Oh. Right. John the Baptist. He can pop in sometimes. Okay. Yeah, why not? Now, would you normally expect to find a local priest or a businessman, another local businessman, in, in the religious artwork? Oh, so he's photoshopped himself into the Last Supper. Well, we're going to find out. So, religious okay, artwork was... removed after local priest and businessman found among holy images. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't believe I've um, sentence part has shamed you. Uh, well, look, I deserve that. I. Um, mm. It, it is. It is a very. It's a bizarre sentence. Yeah. I also have a result that. overlooking my shoulder. So sorry about that. <laughs> the image featured the head of the charity which commissioned the painting of Saint Sabinus, meeting Saint Benedict, which cost seventeen thousand uh, pounds. The priest who runs the cathedral also appeared. Ah. Huh. Whoa. Right. So. I mean, is that is that too much to ask? In fact, I think that used to happen back in the, uh, you know, the Da Vinci, Da, da, da Michi, Da Vinci? Da Vinci, Da Vinci. No, no, who was the family that sponsored a lot of the uh, Renaissance oh, artists? Oh, uh, the Di Medici, the Medi- Medi- Medici, Medici family, right. isn't it? Yeah. I think that was quite uh, common, actually, to put the benefactors in into the background. So maybe they're just following tradition. But is, is are those people of the same era? You know what I mean, or um, I think uh, Saint Benedict and uh, the local priest probably were uh, set apart by about uh, a thousand <laughs> years, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, I had a uh, p- t- uh, painting of meatloaf uh, commissioned, and I uh, asked to be in the audience. The singer, not the food. I'm assuming. Um... <laughs> 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 a big, uh, big, uh, big tray, big plate of meatloaf on a painting hanging right above the bed. That is actually a, a little bit of advice for dear listener. If you ever commission a painting of meatloaf, do be explicit <laughs> with what you're after. Yes, yeah, so I would do anything for loaf. <laughs> That's right. What other bands could you get in trouble with, or artists? I imagine a, commissioning a painting of Boston could get you in trouble. I could, yeah. yeah. Airplane, um, the band. Uh, Air- <laughs> <laughs> Although they were, were they Jefferson uh, Airplane or was that Jefferson Starship they became? They were all of those things. They were Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> they were Jeff- Jefferson Starship, and then they were just Starship. Actually, most most uh, commissioning of band paintings, you'd have to be explicit because you can get in trouble with the Eagles, the Beatles, all sorts. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So. Take me back to the painting. So you're saying uh, you, I, I might need to do. You, we've been doing a lot of Google shitting um, in this episode. Can you tell me a bit about? Was it Saint? Did you say Saint Benedict and Saint Augustine? Is that what you said? No, it was Saint Sabinus meeting Saint Benedict. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, let's 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 do a little bit of digging on this. Let me take like. 
Yes. Is this something that just happened recently? I mean, they could be... Uh... Well, hang on a second. Do you not understand anything about the beatification process? Um, it takes a little while, yeah. doesn't it? I think you have to be... You have to prove a miracle, I believe. Yeah. And do you have to be dead? Probably. Uh, yeah, I think you've got to be dead. Right, let's have a look here. Yeah. Yeah, so I think these are definitely, um... Quite old. Right, I'm getting information about the painting. Right, let's see. Okay. I've Googled St. Sabinus meeting St. Benedict. I should have just Googled uh, one or the other. Let's start with St. Sabinus. S A B I N U S, dear listener, so you can do this at home. Uh, so I wonder what the two guys, like what their story was that yeah. meeting was such a big thing. Yeah. You know, that okay. it was worth having a painting of. Okay. Were they mortal enemies or something, or were they uh, saints that lived on the other side of the world and they finally met? Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe they they undertook a journey on foot that took <laughs> many many years, and then they finally met and then dropped dead. Uh, oh, this doesn't sound good for Sabinus. He was uh, part of an order that required all Christians to sacrifice to the gods or be put to death. Oh dear. What? Oh, this is, uh, yeah, there's a bit, this is a bit too dense for me to, to uh, That's right. It, um, it doesn't sound like apart. he's, uh, he's, he doesn't sound like he's painting worthy for, for mine. <laughs> Let's put in why like a real piece did of work. Saint Sophinus meet Saint <laughs> Benedict? Oh, we don't know. Saint Benedict. I believe he invented the soft poached egg, I think. <laughs> At least the sauce that goes on top of it. Um, <laughs> all right. We, 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 this, I think this is the first time Google shit has failed. Well, it was a big, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's a big question. Big swing. Uh, yeah, otherwise I'm just getting information about the actual painting. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps this whole meeting of those two is just, it, this is, it's never fictional. Never happened. Never happened. Yeah, maybe this is like a uh, um, like fan fiction. You know yeah. what I mean? Where the uh, the local priest and the local businessman were big fans of Saint Benedict and Saint whatever the other guy was. That's right. And they're like, yeah, let's put it into a picture, him and him, and then you and me, and we'll all get in there. Now, like you, I'm like you, like me. <laughs> I uh, prefer <laughs> my religious artwork only to depict things that actually happened. You right, like so. your religious artwork to be factual, okay? That's right, so right. moving on. Yeah, the two, yeah. Um, so you've heard of a photo bomb, right? Maybe these two guys they did a painting bomb. If that's a thing. Exactly. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I just uh, spoiled a little. I've looked ahead and there's uh, something uh, coming up. <laughs> a religious. Okay. Okay. So we, we've talked about this. Uh, the painting was gifted to the cathedral in southern Italy, but caused controversy upon further inspection. The image featured the boss of the charity who commissioned the seventeen thousand pound painting, as well as the priest who runs the cathedral. So they popped up. Right. I don't think that's uh, that's too bad. If I was uh, lashing out seventeen thousand pound on the family uh, church, I wouldn't mind popping up in the background with uh, you know. I'd insist on it. Maybe with a hair shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd want to be in robes. So, they, did, have you, have you, can you see the picture? Or is that is that is that there? Yes, I can see the picture, and they're a little bit uh, cut off, but one certainly appears to be wearing robes. Um, okay, so does the uh, d can you tell who the the saints are and who the uh, the non saints are? Yeah, well, one one is pretty well done, it. but the other one is pretty bad. I think. Right. The other one's in like in a leather jacket. Yeah. No, it looks like a, a cotton t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a Gucci shirt. Yeah. <laughs> now we'll point it we'll point out when I do commission this painting and ask to be uh, you know, pictured in a hair shoot hair hair shirt, I will definitely ask that uh my feet aren't showing because I cannot be seen in sandals. <laughs> I love the idea of this painting of two guys in like ancient Roman robes and the other two guys are like in sunglasses and a t shirt. <laughs> One's wearing a Ghostbusters t shirt, yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. 
Um, the artist wanted to portray two authorita- authoritative, authoritative, two authoritative representatives of the community. People the shared community. their own reproduction of the artwork online, featuring other famous f- faces inserted onto the canvas. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd uh, suggest um, some more famous saints, like uh, Saint Elmo's Fire, for example. <laughs> Who's your Who's your favourite saint? My favourite saint. Ooh. Uh, probably. Probably Saint Christopher. He's He's quite popular. He's the patron saint of travellers, I believe. He is. Everyone always used to have like a Saint Christopher medallion. Not everyone, but a lot of people. Yeah. Where I grew up. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I never got one of those. I didn't. Uh, I didn't believe in. Uh, I didn't believe in travel. <laughs> <laughs> That's comedy. Um, uh, Giuseppe, Giuseppe. Giuseppe, is that what you Giuseppe, yeah. Giuseppe. That's, I believe that's uh, that's Italian for Joseph. Mm, quite, quite possibly. I think, uh, pretty sure it is, yeah. Mm, so it was uh, Giuseppe and his coat of many colours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giuseppe's coat was colourful, you must believe. Pink and yellow and orange and yellow and green and azure and lemon and... I've run out of colours. <laughs> that's a lot of colour. I've got a fair way into the... Yeah, that's wheel. pretty good. Not bad. Just have a quick pause here. You can edit this out. Um, so I wonder I wonder how big the painting is. Was it like, you know, for 17 grand or pounds, uh, that would want to be a fairly big painting. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can, they tell us. And you say you can see it, so it's just the four guys, the two saints yeah, well, and, the, and the two uh, guys. Yeah, don't worry, uh, Ku and all the podcast and dear listener, we'll uh, tweet this out, I'd podcast KK on, on yes, uh, Twitter, so you can check it out. But um, but just for now, so it's not like a, like a like a, a picture of lots and lots of people, it's just those four dudes. No, 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 there's, um, let's see, there is in total, okay, the two, uh, there's ten people. Plus a dove. And uh, one of those ten people, I'm um, blurring the lines, that is actually a uh, a Cupid. What do you call those? It's not a Cupid. A Cupid was the name a of A cherub. One. A cherub, thank you. Nine mm-hmm. people in a cherub. The majority mm-hmm. look like they belong in a religious painting, and it's a, um, you know, after the old masters style, if you know what I mean. It's kind of... Um, moving towards being photorealistic it's not uh, impressionism or anything like that <clears throat> um, so I wonder if the, the artists, the, the other people besides the two saints and then the two local businessmen and the, or the priest um, who the other people are, any other famous Italians maybe they, uh, who are some other famous Italians that might be in there um, well I think Mario- John Bon Jovi <laughs> No, uh, close. Uh, Richie Sambora. He's in the background. <laughs> he's got a quill in his hand. Um, right. I'm pretty sure that's he's, Mario. He's from He's penning, the penning some lyrics to the next big Bon Jovi hit. <laughs> when is it coming? <laughs> oh, newsflash, Kelso. I, Richie Sambora isn't in Bon Jovi anymore well, and hasn't been for a little while. I thought you were going to tell me he was dead. Oof. No, no, he's still alive. He flew the coop. <laughs> he flew the coop. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, d- 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 uh, uh, the Giuseppe um, told local media that he claims full autonomy in my interpretive choices. So it looks like he's taken one for the team, and by the team I mean the uh, charity <laughs> head of the charity and the local <laughs> priest. <laughs> well, I believe that's called artistic license. Yeah, you know? I, I Why think not? you know. I think that's fair, and like I said, I think there's historical precedent for this happening. Um, Giuseppe should have stood up for himself. Maybe he did. Let's find out. Yeah, He's, I'm with Giuseppe. I'm with Giuseppe on this. Yeah, he said. I'm, I'm on team Giuseppe. <laughs> He said his choice of the subjects represented in the composition was the result of a free artistic interpretation dictated by the need to tell the story of devotion to the saints. 
Whoa. Oh. I think he's been workshopping that uh, response for some time. Yeah. And that and uh, a big wad of cash. <laughs> Because his motivation. <laughs> you can imagine the uh, the 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 scene, dear listener, when Giuseppe got uh, buttonholed by the reporter on his doorstep. <laughs> and he said, "What's your explanation?" And Giuseppe said, "Hang on a second, I've got this." And he shuffled his uh, palm cards. Um, uh, it was a result of a free artistic interpretation <laughs> dictated by the need to tell the story of devotion to the sense. <laughs> Oh, Kelso. Oh, Do apologise. A man of a thousand uh, voices. Dear listener in Italy, or of any sort of Italian uh, leaning. <laughs> it, was, uh, it wasn't really Italian, it was more just a general uh, <laughs> European accent. Uh, Thank you. Take your pick. No, it wasn't. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that was good. Uh, he did say, Giuseppe did say, the artist, during the process, they had both asked not to be portrayed. Wow. Oh. Wow. Okay. Do you think well, that's, that's true? Turned everything on his head. I don't know. I think he's he's been, it's been decided he's going to be the fall guy and he's, uh, he's just uh, defending, yeah. Yeah. defending them to the, yeah. Sounds like he's putting a spin on it, you know? <laughs> now, this is the weird thing that made me laugh earlier. But it seems uh, Giovanni did try to make them, i.e. the uh, the two people inserted, less evident by adding a COVID face mask to one of them. (laughs) Uh, Oh, no, hang on. He added a COVID face mask. Right, he tried to make them less evident by adding a COVID face mask to the president of the charity and hiding the priest's face behind a cross. Whoa, I thought that was St. Benedict. Right, because nothing says 2,000 years ago like an N95 mask. I know. (laughs) All right, so sure enough, uh, dear listener, and uh, on the painting, one of the guys in the foreground kind of looks like he's in scrubs and he's wearing a COVID mask (laughs) with short hair. (laughs) And uh, one of the guys who I thought actually belonged in the painting is hiding, got like kind of holding a small crucifix in front of his face so you can only see like a two-thirds of his face so that's the priest and the boy wearing a t-shirt is not explained right i'm no longer on team giuseppe this guy is batshit crazy <laughs> otherwise i like the pretty much like the painting i reckon he should be taken down to the local constabulary and have his brushes and paints confiscated for a year <laughs> that, is that the worst punishment for a painter <laughs> You, you, um, you're a bit of a painter in your, uh, you know, in your time. What, what's the worst punishment that could have happened to you in uh, year eleven art class to be punished for, um, I don't know, buttonholing someone? Um, probably not being able to leave class. I would say, <laughs> <laughs> having to do a, a never-ending in, in uh, perpetuity. <laughs> um, so that was my own personal hell. Uh, I didn't like. I liked art, but I didn't like art class. And uh, it sounds like Giuseppe is uh, the same. He, uh, d- but because you're looking at the painting, Kelso, I- is it of a quality, uh, the, a decent quality? Can can he paint, or does it look a bit sort of naive, and childish? No, I I rate it. I'm no expert, as dear listener knows, but uh, no, I rate it. And, he, and he's and he's done it in the in that classic sort of Renaissance style. Yeah, know, I mean, it's it's about. obviously a little bit different. It's a little bit uh, more, slightly more modern than that. But um, it wouldn't look well, out the, of place. The, the, the COVID look, mask is. You know, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't look out of place in a church, other than the COVID mask. And um, what's not been mentioned? There's a, a boy. Like I said, wearing a T-shirt in the very foreground, looking over his shoulder, who right. literally, who does actually look like he's been photoshopped in, not painted. So that's not been mentioned. <laughs> Is there any Ferraris in the picture? There's no Ferraris. Um, any Fiat's? <laughs> no, but there is one of those scooters. No, those scooters. A Vespa. A, a Vespa. Vespa. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> But there was a Vespa in that uh, James Bond movie. No one complained. Yeah, no, not at all. I, I, I really want to see it. I'm going to, have to uh, I'm going to. You have to tweet that. Uh, I'd love to see this painting. I'm absolutely enthralled. Yeah. 
I feel invested. And, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sh- Photoshop my face onto it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll tell you, well, See if anyone notices. Like, this is not technically Google shit, but I'm going to actually like, do a screenshot right now and send it to you because I think it's important. Because okay, right. you're, you're the artistic one in the family, the podcast Oh, I'm going to give a little bit of an artistic appraisal live on air. Yeah. When I say okay. the, face, uh, the Facebook, the, the, fam, the podcast family, that means me, you, yep. and our matriarch, of course, Roselle. Roselle and Roselle's boyfriend. And dear listener, you're included. Yeah. Right, here we go. Of course. The big water family. The extended water family. Oh, here it comes. All right. Well, look, let's see what we got here. Okay. My first thoughts are... Um, oh, it is a bit more modern, yeah. Um, it's sort of half-half. Yeah, that's a little girl, and then I see what you're saying, a little boy wearing a T-shirt. So the priest is the religious figure half hiding behind a cross in front of his face. Yeah, that is weird. And the head of the charity is wearing the face mask. Wearing the face mask? Oh, that (laughs) that guy is down there. What's he doing down there? I think they would have got away with it if GSF didn't put the face mask on him. And is that... What is that... But the, is that like the, the, the Pope there in the middle? No, I, I'm assuming one of them is St. Sabinus and the other one is um, St. Benedict. I'm assuming the two right. closest to the cherub. And who's that little girl who looks like she does not want to be there? Uh, I think she's just one of the... Uh, she's an angel. No, she doesn't. No, I don't know. I reckon I would pop my face in uh, just, just behind the... Uh, the the guy that looks like the Pope's shoulder, I'd probably put my face in there. Okay. Yeah. Right. It is a weird painting. It kind of looks like something that would be airbrushed on the side of a panel van. <laughs> it does. It does get um, that feeling. Yeah. But um, um, I enjoy any religious painting which has got a little bit of masonry in it. You know, I like a bit of masonry, you know, columns oh, yeah. and Absolutely. pillars and oh. stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, it's got to at least have a pillar, a plinth, a couple of columns... Um, I'm satisfied. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't. I'm not sure if this is 17 grand's worth of painting, but uh, that don't, doesn't mention dimensions yeah. of the painting. No, they didn't. It wouldn't well, be bloody huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you have this down to the cathedral by this Friday? And uh, let me repeat this: I want this bloody huge. Now, I wonder if this photo we've taken as is one of the uh, photo shops where people have put extra people in. Because that kid wearing a T-shirt it definitely doesn't belong. It does. Because that's a photo. Yeah. In fact, it, it may even be um, the the picture of the, uh, that that's an actual kid standing in front of the painting. Ah, right. Yes, I think you might be right. Do you reckon? Yeah, possibly. What do you think, dear well, listener? Little, no, absolutely. Well, I implore, I implore, dear listener, if you are listening, go straight to uh, Twitter, uh, KAK, uh, yeah. podcast KAK at Twitter. Dot, uh, dot, no, what am I saying? Dot com. <laughs> now, check it out, because there's something else, dear listener, and maybe I can get you yeah. to run an eye over this. Uh, check out the bird in the top right-hand corner. Just zoom in on that bird. I think he's stolen somebody's shoelace. <laughs> Is it a vanity it ribbon? Or? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I do, do. Now, dear listener, um, do as Kerwin suggests. Uh, go straight to Twitter as you're listening to this. Uh, discover that we haven't tweeted out the link. Uh, then tweet us. Then we will tweet exactly. out the link. Pause the we podcast. T- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, and then come back to it. Yeah. Um, it's a heck of a painting. Yeah. I'm glad you sent it to me because I. It's not what I was uh, that I was visualizing. Right. Um, it's a bit of everything. Yeah. Well, I claim no foul, yeah. no no harm, no foul. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's art. That's art. Hmm. Do I have a painting joke? 
Um, did you hear about how the boat carrying a big load of red paint and a small load of blue paint crashed on a desert island? They were marooned. Yeah, I don't get paid very much around here. Kerwin, AJ has yes. been in touch. Oh, yes, you are there still. Good. Yes. AJ's uh, been in touch and he uh, has applied and succeeded in becoming a virtual intern. You can too, dear. Let us know by tweeting us at podcastkak or emailing at podcastkak at gmail.com. Send us through an article, perhaps a song that's related to it, and you can find out what we think, just as AJ done, has done. Edit that out. Here we go. <laughs> No, not the way you said it. Sounded very just like AJ Dunn. <laughs> you know, kind of sounded very, uh, very Cockney. Cockney. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure where AJ is from. He can let us know. Well, actually, he, uh, the link is sent to a British newspaper, so it's quite possibly he's a Cockney. He's British. He's Cockney. Yeah, chimney sweep probably. <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not a chimney sweep, he's definitely uh, involved in the uh, grimy underworld. Well, here's a sidebar, uh, Kelso. You live in London. I don't. I've never been to London. I want to. But um, tell me, is there still a need for chimney sweeps in London? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to say that it almost certainly yes. Cause so do you have a chimney at your place? I do not have a chimney. Hmm. But I, I imagine in like a place the size of London, with the history of London, there must be like a couple of... Um, you know, places that are kind of doing a chimney is... Am I saying chimney, right? Chimney? I think chimney? It, it feels like you're putting an extra N in there. Yeah. I, um, I think that's what Cockney Or an do. extra I. Chimney. <laughs> chimney. I'm thinking of chimney cricket. I think I'm doing Dick Van Dyke's um, <laughs> Cockney accent <laughs> from Mary Poppins. <laughs> you're famously the worst Cockney accent of all time. Wow. Yes. I, I rate it. Better than no, me. you don't. <laughs> really? Uh, I, I, it, I, it never offended me, let's put it that way. But mind you... Let's put it this way. In the last segment, your Italian accent was better than his... Uh... <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, that's more of a compliment as well as an insult. Um, I imagine there's some places that have got uh, running fireplaces that do need a chimney sweep. Now, whether it's a small boy dressed in uh, Victorian clothing is another matter. <laughs> <laughs> raggedy clothes yeah. right. and even if it is a small cool. boy dressed in raggedy clothes they probably make him wet wipe down his face between each uh, job <laughs> nowadays he, he calls everyone governor that, that kid yeah, yeah that's right did you know Kelso in Australia or at least in where I live you're not allowed to build a new house that has a fireplace whoa if you have an old one that has a fireplace you're allowed to use it but if you build build a new house, you're not allowed to have a fireplace. Now, does that so preclude... Chim- yeah, the chimney sweep industry is dying here. <laughs> and someone needs to do something about it. <laughs> now, does that preclude, um, I don't know, electric fires? Electric fires? Yeah, kind of. You mean a heater? No, you know how they have like... Electric fire? No, no. Not a fake fire in the sense it's like a fire on a television, but like um, a gas fire, where it's like it's like oh, gas, fake yeah. fake uh, yeah, coals. You know that. That's okay. Yeah, but not allowed to burn well, wood. A, yeah, no no combustible fireplaces right. um, to be built, and that's been the case for a while. So uh, little by little, um, wow. and it it you know if if anyone knows uh, southeast Queensland where I'm from, <laughs> you don't need a fireplace <laughs> anyway, let alone a um, wood fireplace. Now, do you think this prohibition will lead to Australia exporting chimney sweeps to the rest of the world because we have a surfeit, a surplus? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, when I walk down the main street of the city, there's just uh, an abundance of young chimney sweeps just looking for work. Asking um, for money. Can I clean your chimney, Governor? I'm like, no, we don't have one. We're not allowed to. Yeah. Um, could, we not, and look, uh, could we not press them into uh, the horse racing industry as jockeys? Dirty little jockeys. Um, yeah, I guess so. Look, I mean, well, look, they, they're, they're, we have a lot of uh, chin, young chimney sweeps begging for money on the streets. Oh. So like, like, you can't clean the chimney, but here's some money for a kebab. <laughs> anyway, dear listener, do get in touch if you are indeed uh, a chimney sweep. 
be yes i really did pull focus from that story didn't i Never anyway, mind. Uh, we didn't we didn't go we didn't go backwards because we haven't even started it so here we go let's <laughs> let's see what aj's got to say <laughs> he's on tenterhooks sorry aj he, <laughs> he just he just bought his um or she just bought the partner into the rooms he goes oh, i've got on it's only i'm only on bloody or what's all that about yeah. Do you reckon they keep hitting that uh, fast forward thirty seconds button? <laughs> I've gone too far. I've got to the showstopper. All right, here we go. Grandma lays out funeral rules, insisting her guests get drunk and do shots. Wow. What, what? So, you, so the grandma that's uh, that that's have it like is the uh, how do I say this? The the guest of honor at the uh, funeral. Um, yeah. Okay, so she's insisted that everyone gets it on. Yeah, so presumably she laid down these rules before she died. Um, You must get your drink on. Yeah. So Grandma lays out, and then in quotes, funeral rules, insisting her guests get drunk and do shots. Now, isn't isn't the do shots redundant? Uh, No, I guess not. You could get drunk without doing shots, couldn't you? Yeah, well, yeah. And you could do shots well, and think, not get drunk if you're a seasoned drinker? Oh, I don't know about that. I think any time I've been drinking and shots are involved, it's, uh, yeah, well, you, slippery slope. Well, you, you'll forgive me for being anal. I hope you won't buttonhole me about that. But um, shots is plural, so you could do two shots and not get drunk. Yeah, but, like, who just does shots by themselves? Usually shots are, like after you've had like a few drinks and somebody goes let's do some shots, shots. and I think yeah that's a really bad idea but I <laughs> you know I, I, I really I succumbed to peer pressure too easily okay. so uh, what's what's the last shot you had uh oof probably uh, a slippery nipple <laughs> yeah in the in the <laughs> middle of a muffin basket <laughs> what Oh yeah, I'd go to the bartender. Hey, but bartender, can I get two buttonholes, please? Um, I'll tell you well, the worst. Meet me out the back in twenty minutes. <laughs> the, the worst shot you can do if you're if you if you want to absolutely guarantee having a hangover. Have you heard of Fireball? Uh, you know that stuff? It does ring a bell. It's whiskey, but it's cinnamon. Oh, okay. So it's like doing a shot, but also doing the cinnamon challenge at once, and. Uh, yeah, nasty, nasty stuff. So not for the faint hearted. Anyway, that's that, that, that's my PSA. That's all I'm saying. Just, <laughs> let's move on. All right, okay. let's have a look at Go, the... back to grandma. <laughs> right, uh, Lily Lillian, that's her name. Really, she sounds like fun. Yeah, ninety two has set out some strict stipulations for people attending her final send off. Ninety two. <whistles> now hang on, let's. Um... Good innings. Now, do you? It hasn't been indicated yet. Do you think Lillian's dead already, or not yet dead? Oh, so she's called a meeting and said, "Look, at my impending funeral, this is how I want it to go down." Yeah, which might be true, but how did this get in the paper? I couldn't. <laughs> Maybe she's a journalist. <laughs> Maybe she knows someone. <laughs> um. Maybe she wrote the article yeah, herself. Let's see. <laughs> so yeah, she, she's a she's a media whore. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lily, and that was uncalled <laughs> for. You'll be careful, you'll be disinvited. Uh, <laughs> it's L- fine, I'll just do shots at home. <laughs> Lily in 92 has set out some strict stipulations, great word, for people attending mm. her final send off, and while there's simple requests, she wants to make sure they're followed. Oh, okay, so maybe the story's more about the uh, extent she's gone to. Mm. <clears throat> She sounds like a real hard ass for a ninety-two year old. Yeah, yeah. Right. I wouldn't be surprised. No, nah, seriously, I'd, I'd like to go to her party. Yeah. Anyway, like my grandma that says, "Let's get pissed." <laughs> We've all thought about what happens to us when we die, which often leaves us often leaves us in a pit of panic and despair. But we perhaps think a little less about what happens to those we leave behind when we kick the bucket. How they'll say goodbye to us. Well, that was uh, that was difficult to read. Yeah. But perhaps, but we perhaps think a little less about what happens to those we leave behind when we kick the button, kick the button. Right. 
Right, so are we thinking about the people attending our funeral like Lillian? Still, there are some people who have a pretty clear idea of how they want their funeral to go and who they want to attend. Right, here we go. One grandmother from yeah. Connecticut in the U.S. shared her stipulations, you do that twice now, for her funeral, mm. and although they're pretty simple requests, she's incredibly headstrong about them. Right, here we go. Do you reckon they're going to say stipulation a third time? <laughs> yeah. Someone needs to get themselves a thesaurus for uh, their birthday. Okay, here we go. Lillian, who wrote down her three rules that she expects to be followed at her funeral, and she's filmed a video... Can I guess them? Can I guess one of the rules? Sure, well... Um, okay, don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's rule number one, obviously. No, 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 sorry, yeah. <laughs> no. And Could we you... know rule two and rule three, get drunk and do shots. <laughs> yeah. Right, now how this come, has come to uh, uh, the uh, attention of the mirror, and probably AJ, is she's filmed a video on TikTok to explain them. <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> oh, TikTok, what the hell? Yeah. She's, in, she's on TikTok, okay. I'm not even on TikTok, well, actually, I am, but whatever. <laughs> Right, the first rule is she wants people to cry for her, but not too much. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Do you see your uh, funeral as a weeping uh, kind of uh, episode? Um, I don't know. I get the feeling that when I go, uh, there'll be a, there's more, a lot of people will be more relieved than anything else. <laughs> Whew, I'm glad that's over with. Um, no, I, I would, I would like, to, I would like to think there's going to be some tears. Yeah. You know? I see more mine, more mine, more as a dirty dicks um, uh, festive night with you know wine, women, and song. Right, <laughs> I'd go to that. Um, yeah, I think, unlike uh, Lillian, I'd be more concerned about the music playlist. That's something I'd probably okay. want to insist on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, she wants people to cry for her, but not too much. Don't make a fool of yourself, she quipped. <laughs> right. Uh oh. This... So is this is this a video thing, or is this she actually she said this to, or is this written down? I'm trying to figure out how she's been, how Lillian has relayed this to her. Family, I think fam, family, I think friends. this is an article reporting on the TikTok videos. So we're getting a second, oh, second hand. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is the Daily Mirror, of course. <laughs> It's all the news from TikTok. <laughs> That's what you have to do to, today to keep your website running. That's where, you, where you got to go. Yep. <laughs> the second is that the ceremony is open to all, apart from a woman named Bertha who is not on the invite list. Bertha, <laughs> get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> oh, I oh, please dish. What's what's up with Bertha? Oh, that's Bertha right. Lillian. Oh, oh. Oh, the history. <laughs> Uh, when explaining Bertha is not welcome at her final goodbye, Lillian said, "Don't let her in." <laughs> That's it. She refused. That's oh, no. it. Oh. <laughs> now here yeah, the more journalist, questions and answers. Yeah, the journalist is earning uh, their keep here because the next sentence says, "Although it sounds like there's a fascinating backstory between Lil Lillian and Bertha." Sadly, she doesn't elaborate on why the woman is invited to the funeral. That's because you're reporting on a TikTok video and you couldn't ask any follow-up questions. <laughs> DM. Um, I'm going to have a stab and say that Bertha uh, did the dirty on Lily and uh, maybe, uh, maybe buttonholed her, uh, her, her boyfriend or something. Almost certainly. Or a Muffin top. So what was it? Muffin cake? What was the thing? Muffin basket. Muffin, muffin <laughs> Totally muffin bastard, her uh, best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine they could have had some sort of uh, visceral disagreement at the Lawn Bowls Club, more likely. <laughs> Lawn Bowls. For <laughs> uh, old Bertha. They have used the word stipulation Rebun again. Here we go. Lillian's final stipulation. Oh my God. Yeah. Guys, seriously. L Let's get a thesaurus up, Kelso. Let's see if we can come up with an alternative right, for stipulation because this is that's just poor journalism. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't even have, before I Google that, I'm going to say rules, uh, dictate, um, um, uh, guidance, yeah. I, demand. I want to say stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. 
Um, yeah, guidelines. Hey, it's actually right. When you actually try to think of another word for stipulation. Yeah, here we go. Uh, it's not that easy, is it? According to the internet, though, condition. Yeah, that works. Yeah, conditions. Provis- yeah. Provision. Proviso. Provisions. That's a good. Yes. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All he had to do was Google it. Gee. Well, he is working, or she is working for the mirror. Oh, well, still, still, there's no excuse for a triple step. <laughs> triple step. <laughs> That's just lazy. Whoa. <laughs> when, when's the last time you st- triple stepped? <laughs> I think that was my first time. <laughs> oh, dear. I need a while to recover from that. Um... <laughs> Lillian's final condition. See, I fixed it. Lillian's final condition, Lillian. the third of her triple step for guests, <laughs> is that they should be sad at the funeral itself, but they had better go and get drunk afterwards. Oh, she's not. They're not laying on on the on the on the booze. At the, well, I guess at the funeral. Hey, now there's no booze. Lillian. I got a bone to pick with Lillian. Right. I'm pretty sure you should not drink when you're sad, even though everyone does it. You shouldn't encourage it. Right. Wow. But she, uh, yeah, she, she better go and get drunk afterwards. I guess she means that the uh, the wake. Yes. So it's like be sad and then get happy. You know? Yeah. That's what it was. So oh, that's fair enough. Well, that's pretty much every funeral, isn't it? She she's not exactly uh, no. coming up with any new material here. She's just describing pretty much any funeral I've been to. Oh. Um, no, she follows up by saying, uh, she said, "Take a shot for me." Now, is that some sort of... Take a shot. Is that some sort of code or codex? Take hmm. a shot for me. Do you think... Take sh- a shot for me. Do you think there's a... Uh, I'm getting the feeling there's a contract out in Lillian's uh, life and she's asking someone to take a shot for her. Maybe she's uh, you know, just hinting that someone needs to uh, off Bertha. <laughs> you know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a holiday accident. Could be a, a holiday accident. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the plot Whoa, thickens. Well, I'll tell you what, Lillian, who has a staggering 3.9 million followers on TikTok. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Uh, her films make up to... Tor- hang on, that makes... Her films... Lillian films, makeup tutorials, fashion tips, and dating advice on her channel. Oh, we've been wow. miss- missing out here. It's not too late for us, Kel. So she's ninety-two. So we've got time to become uh, big stars. Yeah. Well, let's not hope too many of um, too many ladies are listening because uh, we're in trouble here. Another recent video: the ninety-two-year-old shared the thing she looks out for as red flags in a potential new partner. She explained if a man doesn't hold the door open for her, she knows he's not Mr. Right. Oh, and it's going to scratch us out. (laughs) At 92, I'd be looking for automatic doors everywhere I went. (laughs) I wouldn't be holding a door open for myself, let alone a potential uh, lady friend. I will say for myself, I actually do hold doors open. I'm a big fan of that. But um, if if the person who comes through doesn't thank me, then I have a red-hot go at them. Last time I held a door open for someone, I got in trouble for it. <laughs> okay. At my gym. You're not supposed to do that. Oh. Well, what? So they swipe, get everyone get has to more swipe of... in individually. You can't. Oh, it. right. Okay. It's called tailgating. I didn't know there was a, there's a, whole, there's a term for it. <coughs> you heard that before? Yeah. Tailgating. Yeah. No tailgating, it says. No, I, I I've heard that, that one, yeah. Yes, yeah, so like when you, yeah. yeah. It's more of a turnstile, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, uh, or a gym, you know, swipe thing, beep, you know, that whole thing. You, you right. Key tag. Thing. I thought you were going to yeah. say the other gym goer uh, got upset because part of their workout was to open, <laughs> open the front door. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, they're, although they're, we do get some senior citizens. I, as I think I might have mentioned to you before, uh, Kel, so I go to the gym later in the morning. Right. When a, a few more of the other uh, seniors tend to go, and uh, which is kind of cool. At first it annoyed me. But then I realised I'm the hot young guy in that crowd. Kind of made me feel good. And so. loving it. I, I, I went with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, check out Kerwin. Yeah. You know. There you go. I wouldn't mind having his BMI. 
This is the last thing I need. Kevin, I can tell by the Rizal is shuffling out the front door. It's time for us to uh, stop this show, and that means it's time for your new segment, Kerwin's Rumor Mill. What's in the mill? Well, uh, we kind of I had a uh, we got messaged by Keith. Keith. Um, Hello, Keith. Keith, yes. And uh, Keith wanted uh, uh, some Fleetwood Mac. So that is right on my wheelhouse. So I thought we'd maybe dig up a little bit of Fleetwood Mac rumor, which, you know, no pun intended, the name of their very famous album. Um, so very relevant. So I found this little rumor uh, to do with Stevie Nicks. Uh-oh. You know. Uh, yeah, I know. Stevie Nicks, a noted cocaine enthusiast. <laughs> Um, enthusiast and it says here yeah enthusiast yeah it said it says it goes as such <clears throat> it's not a rumour that Stevie Nicks Fleetwood Mac and probably almost every other rock and roll musician in the 70s did cocaine right until they were out of their minds and recording some of the greatest soft rock tunes ever while they are at it but apparently Nicks wrote in her autobiography that she had such an intense addiction to blow, right? Right. That she burned a hole in her nose the size of a uh, of a ten cent piece. Oh. And that's where the rumors started. The actual rumors, not the album, um, about this very thing. Oh, the story goes that Nix was so addicted to coke that she had an assistant rectally administer the drug by blowing it into her through a straw. My word. <laughs> Yeah, as batshit crazy as it sounds, the Southwestern witch, that's what she was, she was was a witchy woman, uh, like Stevie Nicks, probably had a a much better way to get super high without having shoving drugs up her butt. So there you go, um, Keith. Now, that is straight from the rumor mill. Now, do you think you would prefer to be an intern in uh, Roselle's role or um, that for... um, (laughs) technician who was uh, administering the white powder to Stevie Nicks uh, nether regions. Yeah, I think uh, he quit that day citing that that was the final yeah. straw. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very good. Listen back carefully to the the mode of delivery, dear listener. The mode, yeah, the apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, there you go, Keith. Uh, and thank you to Keith and AJ for uh, joining us on, on What's All That About? Becoming Virtual Interns. Uh, you can do the same. Podcast KK on Twitter. Cod- podcast, not Codcast. Podcast KK at gmail.com. And, uh, that was a cute little spoonerism there, <laughs> Thank Kelsey. you. And uh, speaking of cute spoonerisms, Keith, here comes some Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yes. Probably, uh, this is probably a song that Stevie wrote while having uh, cocaine administered (laughs) through a drinking straw to where the sun don't shine. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Should I move the microphone? I'll move them. I'll just reposition the mic so you get enough of my guitar as well. Thank you. There we go. A dear listener loves my guitar playing. Sound of loneliness like a heartbeat 
Very nice indeed. Oh, well, you know. Now, do you know uh, which one of the Macs wrote that song? That was Stevie. Stevie wrote it? Yeah. That song was uh, written because you know how the lead guitarist, Lindsay Buckingham, they were like girlfriend and boyfriend? Well, they broke up during the making of that album. There was lots of turmoil. That's funny. I always thought it was the other way around, but um, I'm a sexist pig. (laughs) <laughs> well, he did return for us. So uh, Stevie wrote that song, and then Lindsay uh, wrote um, "You Can Go Your Own Way" back at her. Uh, all right, yeah, dueling, so, dueling yeah, guitars. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> I mean, "Dreams" is a great song, but "Go Your Own Way," Rubik's Cube drop, boom. You know, <laughs> can I just hear it one more time? Can I hear it one more Rubik's Cube drop? Oh, of course you can. Oh, take that, Stevie. <laughs> Now, do you think anyone ever met Stevie and said, do you mind if I could just call you Steve? <laughs> <clears throat> um, now, I, I do have a um, meteorological query, though, for uh, Stevie. Um, I'm not sure thunder does only happen when it's raining. Well, she wasn't a meteorologist. Oh, give her that much. Um, she was doing a lot of coke. <laughs> Anally, <laughs> apparently. Mm. <laughs> Just to emphasise that, if you didn't get it, dealers. <laughs> <laughs> Triple stepped. Um, that's all very well, Cohen, but that does leave our dear listener with one question. Indeed, it does, Kelso. What's, What's all, all that, that about? about? Oh, thanks for listening, dear listener. And uh, don't forget, you can tweet us with any of your uh, uh, news article ideas or your showstoppers or rumor mills at podcastkak on Twitter and also podcastkak at gmail.com. Thanks very much for listening. It really does mean uh, a lot to us. And uh, do tell a friend, as that's how we hope to grow our uh, listenership, if that's a word. 
If you're not too busy uh, researching exactly why St. Sabinus met St. Benedict, then give us a sweet yeah, five... Get back to us on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to know that information. And uh, <clears throat> added to that, if you do know why... Um, uh, thunder does happen when it's raining. That would be interesting to know as well. But anyway, once you've done all that, give us a sweet five-star review on your podcatcher of choice. Till next time. Hooroo. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>